I was amazed when I started doing this research how many studies there were that have actually looked at comparing um, cognitive navigation ability compared, you know, comparing males and females. So there's been numbers of meta-analyses, meaning there are studies um, that have looked at all the other studies and collected data showing very conclusively when you test male ability on these navigation type tasks, they perform better. This doesn't mean that every male outperforms every female. There are huge distributions, just that on average, males slightly do better than females on this. So you see a very well characterized sex difference in cognition. And then stories are told about how this is an adaptation. They tell the story about the hunter-gatherer. Because the men were the hunters and they needed to find their way back, only the men that found their way back had babies. And those are the men that had the genes for the good navigation. Therefore, genes for male advantage in navigation would evolve. That's the story. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that story is correct. So we need to bring evidence to the table to, to try to support that story. If you think about it, though, a little bit more deeply, you realize that there's some major holes in that story to begin with. If you think about the story, only the males that were able to make it back passed on their genes. However, remember that those males pass on their genes to their female offspring as well. So the female offspring are also going to inherit those genes for superior navigation. The way to think about this is nipples, for example. Notice that males also get nipples. Why is that? And the genes that lead to nipples will also be passed on in male offspring. Because nothing is going to prevent them. And since nipples don't harm males, selection is not going to differentiate them and males have nipples. The only way you can force the trait to be under the control of the Y chromosome, in a sense, is by making what's good for one sex bad for the other. That's what will lead to strong differences in sex dimorphism. It's hard to imagine how you'd have antagonistic selection in the case of navigation. It's necessary for uh, the story then to explain why enhanced or superior navigation was bad for females. Otherwise, it would have been inherited by the females as well. So that's the first problem with that idea. The second problem is that if the hypothesis that everybody's buying into is correct, that the reason why males have the superior performance is because they were the hunters and that gave them the advantage, then we should be able to test that hypothesis by looking across species. Those species where the males range farther than, relatively farther than females should show relatively greater spatial navigation, whereas species that show relatively similar home ranges should show relatively similar levels of performance. So we actually did this and looked across 11 species we were able to find from the literature. There were a number of species of rodents, rats, mice, different deer mice, horses, and different non-human primates, and um, different vole species. So there have been 11 species we were able to collect. And if you look at the data, what you see is that, in fact, there is no positive correlation at all. And across all the species, generally, irregardless of what the size differences in the home range are between the sexes, males tended to have an advantage on these navigational tasks. And so if all these other species show the same sex difference as humans, it seems very unlikely that this is something that evolved along a human lineage. Now that's exactly what you would predict based on an alternative hypothesis that you suggest. So what if it's not an adaptation and it has no functional significance at all? It's just a side effect of testosterone, meaning that testosterone has evolved in males to produce some very important male characteristics namely making penises and whatever other secondary sex characteristics like muscle size or body mass or behavior that makes men successful males breeding with females. And note that testosterone is an adaptation for producing those characteristics. But anything else that testosterone does, as long as it doesn't harm male success, constitutes a solution. And for example, there are many side effects of testosterone that we, can, that we know about, like male pattern baldness, like acne that occurs during adolescence like the fact that your ring finger is longer than your index finger and that that difference is associated with the amount of testosterone. So these are just examples. Those don't serve any functional purpose in males. They're just side effects of testosterone. And one more side effect is a slightly different reorganization of 
parts of the brain involved with navigation that give males slight advantage. The data produce greater support for the what I call the testosterone spillover hypothesis, and they do not really support at all the adaptation hypothesis in the sense that the correlation was not positive, it was flat. The impact of this paper is, look, if you actually go and do the test, you find that the data actually support the alternative hypothesis. So maybe we're fooling ourselves into thinking that some of these cognitive traits are really have functional significance, when in fact they're nothing more than a spillover or what people refer to as a spandrel. Spatial navigational ability could have been slightly better in females than males. There's a 50-50 chance. In this case, males seem to be better. But you look at a different trait and it could be the opposite. In fact, look at other traits and you see distributions are shifted where females have a slight advantage. Does that always, in every instance of each sex difference, are these shaped by natural selection? Might this be just a side effect or a spandrel or a consequence of, of the hormones that are not directly functionally relevant? I think when you look at the whole thing and think carefully about it, you conclude that, yeah, it probably is. So the big conclusion is that maybe we shouldn't be so eager to just accept the story, adaptation stories. Maybe there actually is a place for side effects and spandrels with respect to cognitive performance differences between the sexes and other uh, stories that are told about human behavior that may not uh, really be adaptations but, but alternative explanations that people really haven't considered.